Hey. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here. Uh, this is the last Christian Perspectives in Science seminar of this semester. Our speaker today is Steve Matheson, a professor of the biology department here at Kelvin College, and therefore he doesn't get the full introduction that I would for a real visitor. <laughs> but I'm fair. I, I, don't, I, don't give, I give this me a short introduction for every Kelvin professor. Anyway, thank you very much, Steve, for speaking. Uh, Steve teaches biology. I also know I've, uh, he's been a research collaborator with me. I've learned a lot from him. Uh, about evolution, and he's also been one of the leaders of a reading group here at Calvin College on chance, and uh, what's the title of it? Uh, we call it the Random Reading Group. Yeah, it's, like, exactly. it's about randomness and chance and God's activity in the world. So all of these things are converging, as it were, to today's topic. So, uh, yes, yeah. let's welcome uh, Professor uh, Steve uh,
fawning disclaimers about my utter incompetence in that area, actually. I'll outline, importantly, Gould's interpretation of those fossils. I'll tell you then how he reached his grand idea about the nature of evolution after looking at them. Then I'll tell you about a really different idea, the idea of evolutionary convergence. I'll show you some examples of that. We'll look at examples of the Burgess shell fossils as well, by the way. Um, I'll show you some examples of evolutionary convergence, of which we could show hundreds. Um, and I'll tell you why and how Simon Conway Morris reached his view of the history of life based on that idea of evolutionary convergence. Um, I will then confess that Gould's ideas, which I think are really worthy of our consideration, are, as, are well, his, his interpretation of the fossils has been almost completely discarded by his colleagues. So I'll tell you why his, his verdict on the Burgess Shale is almost certainly wrong. And then I'll quickly tell you why I don't think that matters. Um, and, and, then, and then we'll get to the part perhaps a lot of you really want to do today, which is, OK, so what are the interesting questions? Whether Gould was right about the British Shale is not one of them, in my opinion. What are the interesting questions about the nature of the tree of life? Number one, interesting scientific questions, and then interesting questions to believers in the crowd. What do, what do we have at stake here, if anything? And at that point, you'll, you'll, you'll jump in and help me, because I, my answers to most of those are, I don't know. Um, but that's the plan. OK, so uh, the tree of life. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of fun to talk about the tree of life because it would be easy for you to think I'm discussing some interesting aspect of the creation story and a certain thing you're not supposed to eat from and things like that. And of course, we're not. We're talking about um, the, the tree of, of lineage of organisms on the planet. And so the perhaps a simple depiction of the tree of life, you might see like that, where there's a trunk and there are branches and then there are organisms may be represented by tips of branches here and here and here and here and so forth. The tree of life is a pedigree, if you will, although it typically doesn't represent individuals, it represents lineages. So this typical picture of these, this might be humans and that might be fish or something like that. But, but the metaphor of a pedigree is pretty good, right? I mean, if I were to ask you about your lineage, you probably wouldn't start telling me that you were a mammal and before that you were, you know, you would probably talk about your parents, your grandparents, and so forth. And so when you're talking about the tree of life, we're talking about descent, common ancestry, ancestors, descendants, and so forth. That's all we mean. But this is important. Today, the, the, the topic of the tree of life is a tree built about around form not, say, about DNA sequences. So many of you are like, oh, why would we even care about that? Well, then don't worry about it. <laughs> but but it, it, there, are, there are other trees we could build uh, that, would refer to, that, that would refer to inheritance of, say, genes through a, an entire lineage or since the beginning of, of biological history. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about this, this is a tree, and I'll tell you specifically about this one in a second, that shows how, what, how organisms look and how they function. Not necessarily about their genes. Right. So, um, building trees. Well, you need a metaphor to talk about the tree of life. You just heard me struggle to try to tell you what I mean by the tree of life. So, let me show you some famous iconographies of evolution that are that were always intended to tell a true story about evolution, but failed disastrously. All right. So, here is a nice picture of evolution. <coughs> the evolution of man. Um, I'm going to show you some very funny ways that this, this, this idea can be mutated to create humor and uh, editorial commentary. My favorite, which I won't show, show a picture a lot like this, evolution of man, and then down here, evolution of woman, and the woman was always the same. She was on her hands and knees scrubbing the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine what that was mean to communicate. So um, this, this iconography, so this is attacked by Gould justifiably so in, in, his, in the beginning of his argument. He calls this the ladder of progress. So here you have something not very advanced. There you have something advanced. Yes, you can argue later about whether that's even true. That's not the point. Um, and you're going through time. This kind of thing spawns all sorts of nonsense. This is It's looking at pictures like this that probably make people ask questions like this. Well, if we came from monkeys, why are the monkeys still here? All right, so someday I hope you'll laugh when someone says that. Um, and and, and that, that error probably arises from looking at pictures like this. These things are ubiquitous. 
Here are a few variations on the theme. Um, I like that one a lot. Um, <laughs> I can draw it. Um, someone at the Detroit Free Press did ask me. You can guess correctly that you can put anyone you don't like 